Hi hey everyone, welcome back to the garden. Today we're going to be talking about our ranunculus and our anemone coronaria. Now when I first started growing ranunculus, it was one of the first things I ever grew in the garden um, in terms of cut flowers. I just thought they were so beautiful. They have this just big ruffly um, buttercup flower shape and I was immediately drawn to them. The first time I ever planted them, I did plant them in the spring, and let's just face it, I did not have very good results. As it would turn out, ranunculus and anemone coronaria both do really well in places where the climate is pretty mild and cool. Uh, now, unfortunately for me, my springtime temperatures turn hot very fast, so the only solution for me here in zone 6B7 in Kentucky was to plant these corms in the fall. Today I'm going to show you guys just what I do uh, to get these corms ready and to get these corms growing so that I can transplant them into the hoop house and we can overwinter them and get some really beautiful flowers. If you live somewhere where the summer temperatures are a little bit milder, you might have more success with growing these in the spring, but for me I have to sow them in the fall and really just protect them and we'll get some blooms very early in the season. I have made a video on this subject before, so be sure to check those out too on my channel. You can find them by just using the search bar on my main channel page. But I did want to update them just because, you know, a little bit better video quality and um, just a little bit more information. First thing I am going to do with both my anemone corms and my ranunculus corms is I am going to grab some jars and I am going to fill some jars up with water and I am going to soak these. You first receive these corms, these flower bulbs for planting. When you take them out of the bag you will notice that they are pretty dry and pretty crusty. The ranunculus especially look very dried up. They kind of remind me of a little octopus those dried up little octopus tentacle looking corms those are not good those are not what we want to plant the key is going to be rehydrating those the same is also true with the anemone coronaria um, when you first get those corms they are likely to be very dry and um, they almost resemble hard little rocks is how I guess I think of those those also will need a soaking too all I'm going to do is I am just going to fill up my jar or vase or whatever you have with some tap water and I am going to put my corms inside that water. Now, how long you soak your corms will depend on which type you are soaking. Um, in general, I usually soak my ranunculus corms no more than four hours. Seems like at four hours, the bulbs start getting a little bit brittle. They start breaking and more likely the chance that they will rot starts to increase. I definitely soak those no more than four hours. When it comes to the anemone corms, I've seen people suggest to soak them overnight. I personally don't do that. I usually soak my anemone corms about six to eight hours in the water before removing them and planting them up in a tray. The same is also true with the anemone corms. If you soak them for too long, they are more likely to rot when you are, you know, going through the process of starting the bulbs. A lot of sources will suggest that you are able to soak the corms um, with either a fish tank bubbler or a source of running water to keep fresh water constantly going through. I'm not quite sure the reasoning behind this. I have done this in the past. However, over the last couple years, I just have neglected to do it, so I haven't done it, and I haven't had any problems with the corms and with the soaking process. I think this is mainly because I do pay attention to how long they are soaking. I make sure I am not soaking them for an excessive amount of time. Uh, so that is up to you. Just know that some people do suggest using like an old fish tank bubbler or something to aerate the water as the corms are soaking. Uh, that's really up to you and, you know, finding out what works best for you in your yard and everything else. After I have completed the soaking process, I'm just going to go outside. I am going to grab some trays and I'm going to fill them up with potting soil. After I fill the trays up with a moist potting soil, I'm going to carefully arrange the corms in the tray and then lightly cover them with another layer of soil. The soil that I'm covering them with doesn't have to be thick or anything. In fact, 
in terms of my ranunculus, sometimes the crown sticks out of the top of the soil. As long as they are surrounded by soil and coming into really good contact with it, uh, I don't think you'll have too much of a problem. I make sure that these trays are nice and consistently moist and keeping them that way, uh, maintaining that consistent moisture will be very important to uh, get them to begin to sprout and to begin to grow. However, it is important that we do not make this medium too wet or once again, it can promote rot. I like to start these corms outdoors in their tray in a sheltered location, usually in the shade for me personally, around the first week of October here in my garden. During the first week of October, the temperatures are usually 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit at night. In general, I find that these alternating temperatures are absolutely perfect to get these bulbs to wake up and to begin to grow. Once these do begin to grow, I am just going to separate them carefully and I am going to transplant them into the hoop house, which I'm sure I will show you guys when the time comes. That's really about it for starting ranunculus and anemones. The process is pretty simple. I've done this, um, this is my fifth year doing and I think growing ranunculus, they're hands down one of my favorite flowers. Um, if you have any experience with this, as always, I would love to hear all about it in the comments below. I always love learning from you guys and hearing about your experiences and kind of just gaining knowledge from each other. I really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel and you liked it, be sure to subscribe. I would absolutely love to have you. We're making new content all the time about cutting flowers and DIY projects and you really never know what I'm going to to share next. Be sure to share it with your friends, all that good stuff. I hope that you are having an amazing day and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.